demonstrate the duplicate stitch in slow motion. And I am working on getting as many techniques as I can in slow motion. If I'm missing one that you want to see, be sure to leave me a note, drop me an email, let me know, and we'll get it out. Um, duplicate stitch is a way of embroidering, basically, you know, stitching a little blob of color, multiple colors, whatever, onto stockinette. It doesn't work for anything but stockinette, doesn't work for reverse stockinette or garter stitch. It really just works for, um, for uh, stockinette. But it is a way of getting a little design on something or embroidering letters or really anything. And there's another way of getting, um, getting a pattern like this on your knitting, which is called intarsia, and that's a way of actually knitting the stitches in a different color. And intarsia is not as easy to work as duplicate stitch. I will pick in duplicate stitch every day over intarsia. But if you're curious about the difference, you click the little I in the upper right hand corner or um, in the video description field, I'll link to my video called Intarsia versus Duplicate Stitch. <laughs> and I think it's just me complaining about Intarsia the whole time. <laughs> no, I demonstrate Duplicate Stitch, I'm just kidding. Um, so I'm gonna do this in slow motion. Um, I love working this thing. I love working this, this technique. Let's take a look. Here's my swatch. I've put some clippy markers in to mark the um, top and bottom of the second heart that I wanna put in. And because someone will ask, we're going to look at the back of the work. I've done my best to keep it pretty tidy. Not amazing, but not bad. It's just like embroidery. You can make a mess of the back of the work if no one's ever going to see it, or you can try to keep it tidy. And I've already loaded up my tapestry needle with the yarn that I want to use for the heart. And the two weights of yarn are the same. The length I have there is a length that works for me that I'm comfortable with using. Um, and my arm, you know, matches my arm length kind of. Um, I did have to reload with a second strand to finish out the heart pattern. Just taking out this clippy marker. And while we're working duplicate stitch, we're looking at the V's. We're looking at the V shape of the knit stitch. And I want to come in at the bottom of the V, the first place where I, the first stitch where I want to put the duplicate stitch. So I poke through at the very bottom of the V and pull that through and be sure to leave myself enough of a tail on the back so that I can weave it in, tidy it up, whatever I wanna do. I'll definitely weave it in and tidy it up. <laughs> and I'm just taking a look to see how long I have it there, make sure that it's not tangled up in the heart above it. Taking a look at the back of your work every now and then does help keep things neater. So for this first stitch, I'm actually going to skip the V, that is the stitch that I want to embroider into, and go behind both legs of the stitch above it. There's a the right leg, 
and the left leg. Pull that through. And remember that this is decorative, so we want to pay special attention to how each stitch looks and how the tension looks on each stitch. And you'll get a feel for it once you've done it for a little while because it, you don't have to pull hard, but you don't want to leave it too loose. I think the tendency probably for most people is to pull it too hard. Then the last step of the stitch is to go back down into the hole we came out of initially. Go back down into the bottom of that V. Pull that through, and again, we're watching our tension on this. And when you complete a stitch, it's good to take a look at the whole thing to see that both sides look the way you want them to. You can use your needle to pick it out a little bit <clears throat> if you want a little, it a little looser, or um, tug at it a little bit, um, and, and pull it with your needle to straighten it out. Now I'm going to travel up to the next row. Oh, I should also mention, it is much easier to work from the bottom up in duplicate stitch. I'm going to poke in at the bottom of the V for the next stitch that I want to do, which is one row up, one stitch over, And of course, when I pull that through, I make sure that I don't mess up the stitch that I did previously. So I'm gonna skip the V of the stitch that I'm actually embroidering into and go behind both legs of the stitch above it. Pull that through, watching the tension. And then back down into, oh, I'm getting it just right. Also, you see how I put my thumb over the stitch there? Sometimes I do that to tighten it up without tightening it too much. <clears throat> I kind of secure the stitch with my thumb, give it a tug, and it kind of holds it in place but tightens things up on the back. So I am going down into the bottom of the V where we initially came out for this stitch. That looks good. Now I'm traveling <clears throat> to the right and I'm going above the first stitch that we did. So I'm going into the bottom of that V, kind of nestled into the first stitch that we did. And it's not hard. It's actually an easy way to keep track of where you're going and what you're doing. But if we were traveling down, if we were traveling from the top of the work down, we would be going behind not only the two legs of the V above the stitch, but also the duplicate stitch that we created. Do you see what I mean? See, right now we are moving upwards into kind of naked stitches, and it's easier. So I'm going to skip that V, go behind both legs of the stitch above it. And you don't want to split the stitches when you're doing that. I'm sure that that goes without saying. You can feel if you split a stitch because the yarn <clears throat> pulls through really easily um, as long as the, the tapestry needle is going between stitches, between uh, strands of yarn. But once you split a stitch, it becomes more difficult to pull it through. And if that happens, you usually just want to 
take your tapestry needle off and pull it back through that slipped stitch. Just g get it back to uh, the situation before, <laughs> before you uh, split that strand. Here I'm going back into the where I initially came out for this stitch at the bottom of the V and it's nestled right into the first stitch that we made. And this is where it starts to look cool because you can see that there's it's kind of uh, making a connected pattern, kind of making kind of a new fabric on top of the old one. That looks good. Continue moving to the right. And I'm working with pretty big stitches here. You want to pay close attention that you aren't accidentally jumping up a row or down a row. If you're working in smaller stitches or especially if you're working on dark fabric in smaller stitches. I'm coming in at the bottom of the V. And looking at the stitch, I'll skip the stitch I'm embroidering into and go behind both legs of the stitch above it. And every time I pull it through, I'm watching the tension on that stitch. It's easier to fix it in the moment than to try to go back and fix it later because you'll have the whole row to fix or even more or you'll have a messier uh, backside. Back down into the bottom of the V That tension looks good. And the beginning of my heart looks pretty good. A little steam on this will help the fibers relax into the swatch a little bit, if you're going to wash and block it, of course. I think it's pretty fun to work. And there it is. I hope that helps. Good luck.